Today's episode of the Believe in Steelers podcast is brought to you by betonline.ag. Super Bowl 56 is here. Rams and Bengals, SoFi Stadium, Los Angeles, California. Big game is on Sunday. And Ike, there are so many props that you can bet on. Betonline.ag is the place to do it. Man, I'm going to bet online because I think the Cincinnati Bengals not only going to win the Super Bowl, but they'll win the coin toss and defer to the second half. Oh, okay. There you go. Some sage wisdom from Mike Taylor right off the top. Head to betonline.ag today to use use your mobile device, use your desktop computer, sign up today and receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Just use our promo code BELIEVE. That's B-L-E-A-V to get started. That online where the game starts. All right, cue the music. It's time to start the show. Welcome to the Believe in Steelers podcast on the Believe Podcast Network. I'm your host, Mark Bergen, joined as always by my guy, two-time Super Bowl champion and 12-year veteran of the Pittsburgh Steelers, number 24, Ike Taylor. IT, recording this on Thursday morning. We right. both got our right. robes on. I'm starting right. to get a little toasty, though, because I am so excited and fired up. We've got two great guests on today's episode of the show, and it's going to be rare air, Ike, because today's guests are like you, are also both two-time Super Bowl champions. Man, I love the fact that you just took that thing off so smooth as you did. But, man, you can stay fired up because I'm going to be cool like Jackpot Joey when it comes down to this pressure, baby. But, yeah, I can't wait for these guests to come on, man. Hines Ward and Terrell Davis, man, two former, you know, Super Bowl MVPs, man. We got something great to talk about. So we welcome in Heinz Ward and Terrell Davis. Really excited to welcome them on on today's episode of the Believe It's Do This podcast. Fellas, welcome in. Glad to be a part of it. Yeah, nice to be here, so, guys. So, so, so we got the salute. We got the mile high from TD, right? Bam, and we got the guy who used to always smile, my former teammate, but he used to put a hurting on a lot of people. And Heinz Ward, fellas, I appreciate y'all being on the show this morning. I know it's early. I know y'all got a lot going on, but I'm gonna get straight to the punch, and I'm gonna start with you, Heinz. Who you got winning the Super Bowl and why? I'm going to go with the Rams, I, man, uh, just because of the Georgia alum that we have on the Rams as well. <laughs> I want to, you know, Georgia won a national championship, so I want to see my fellow Bulldogs uh, bring home a Super Bowl ring. But overall, just looking at it, man, the Rams, you know, Aaron Donald, Von Miller, the matchup in the trenches, Rams D-line versus Cincinnati's O-line. Uh, I just don't know how you stop those guys. Uh, how do you block Aaron Donald? Um, especially from Cincinnati, who's given up eight sacks so far in the, in the postseason. Um, just looking at overall, just the, the firepower, Matthew Stafford, OBJ, Cooper Cup. You got Jalen Ramsey locking everybody down with uh, Aaron Donald and Von Miller and company. It's just hard for me uh, not to go with the Rams with that firepower and the, and the guys they have on their team. Yeah, I think I'm, I'm, with, the, I'm with the Rams too, man. I'm with the Rams too. I just – for me, for me, it's it's like that old it's that old team that uh, you know when I was in Denver and we had that kind of win one for John mentality when we won our right. first Super Bowl. I right. think that sense is is there for the Rams, right? It's there with uh, you know Stafford. It's there with Aaron Donald. It's there with Andrew Whitworth. I mean, there's a lot of old guys who had never hoisted right. that trophy. So, and if they're playing at home. I mean, I think that's good. that ultimately is going to be the difference. Hey, Hans, you you, you don't feel like. The Cincinnati Bengals got a little bit of 2005 Pittsburgh Steelers in them on what we did. You know, I, 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 I would say that a little bit, just a little bit. I, but, you know, uh, having the year that Cincinnati had the last year, I, that's why I see the difference. You know, last year I think they won four to five games, and now they're the Cinderella story uh, where they're at. Uh, they won our division, the AFC North. Uh, I just think the firepower, they're just so young. Uh, for them, there's no pressure because no one expected them to, to play in the Super Bowl. But ultimately, at the end of the day, I, you always know, man, we lean on our playmakers. You know, when the big game comes, 
we always count on our guys who who led us there the whole way. You got your role players. Uh, just do your job. Don't try to do more than what you have to do. Uh, but at the end of the day, you lean on the guys that's gotten you there, the Jalen Ramsey, and Aaron Donald, Devon Miller, uh, Matthew Stafford. Those guys are what you lean on in the, in the big game. And uh, that's what it's all about to me. So that's the difference, Ike. Gotcha. Hey, TD, TD, if you had one drive, TD, <laughs> one drive, I know you got the LA, LA Rams. Who are you taking, though? you taking Matthew Stafford or you taking Joe Burrow, bro? Ooh, one drive. <laughs> you you mm. got one drive. What quarterback you take? I'm it's still Joe going Burrow. with Stafford, man. <laughs> you, you I'm still that. going with Stafford, man. <laughs> I'm still going with Stafford. I, 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 I got to go with the dude. I am. Okay? Listen, I, I, res I respect Joe and what he's done in his young right. career. There, no doubt about it. But I need that dude that's been that's been heartened by by a bunch of failure, a bunch of disappointment, a guy who recognizes that, that's you know, it's not all about. the. Well, what, what do you mean? With the, oh, he, so he, I had, he hasn't I had, been in the league long enough. I had I had don't have to because we already know he's special. So I had to leave. I oh, had no. to leave Ohio State because I couldn't. Cause I couldn't start because y'all like somebody else better than me. I go down to LSU. I wind up tearing it up. Don't forget how good I was in high school. How how good I was in college. I just so happened to have the juice. Now last year I didn't have a full season because I got my ACL torn. So I only played four games last year. This year when he came back a hundred percent, when I saw what really clicked for me was that Tennessee game where you get sacked nine times, and we all know this. Yeah. Usually when a quarterback gets sacked nine times, they start seeing ghosts. You know what I'm saying? You can just whistle at them, and they'll fall down, and they'll take a sack. Jackpot Joe didn't budge at all. And don't get me wrong, I love Matthew Stafford. I think his toughness is something we don't talk about enough because if you just ask his teammates, they'll say how tough the young man and the injuries he played through as a quarterback. Something similar, Hines, to what Ben does. You know, Ben kind of just played through whatever uh, injury he going through and really nobody know unless he tell them. But at the, at the same time, that's just how I look at Jackpot Joe. I think it's time for the Cincinnati Bengals. I think it is a Cinderella story. Um, I understand they do have a lot of L.A. star potential over there for the Rams, and that's just what it is. But I'm going to rock with Cincinnati. But I get it. I, I, I get what y'all are saying. But, I, 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 wouldn't, I wouldn't be shocked if the Bengals won. So that's what, I'm okay. not saying that this is a clear. I'm mm -hmm. saying that this either team can win this one. And I think part of this for me is not that I'm – that I'm thinking the Rams uh, 100%, but what I'm saying, I'm kind of rooting for the Rams just because gotcha. of the, the gotcha. Aaron Donalds on the team, the Andrew Whitworth, who's, you know, 16-year career, never won one. And of course, Matthew Stafford, Georgia Bulldog, man, so I got I to gotta root for him. You're right. <laughs> You're right. Hines, let me, let, let me hop in here. Hines, you and TD were college teammates at Georgia. I don't know the best way to ask this question, but, like, what's the <laughs> best story that you can share when you two were college oh. teammates at the University of Georgia? <laughs> I got plenty of great stories. Man. <laughs> uh, let me just tell you, you know, we both played running back, and uh, TD was the tailback. Uh, so basically we had two tailbacks, and at the time we were running the ball, and TD was the fullback, and he got tired of blocking for me. So one time in the huddle, he's like, Hines, you go right here. I'm getting the ball. And I looked at him, I was like, you know, he's the senior on the team. I, I'm the freshman. What I'm supposed to say. And then <laughs> next thing you know, I like the fullback. They handed it off to Terrell. Needless to say, it wasn't a great play because I was 165 pounds. But Terrell's frustration and wanting to run the ball because they were giving it to me all the time. Uh, but I went out there. I gave my 165 pounds. I threw my body out there. So TD likes to credit that the reason that I – was so aggressive in the run game and my pro career was the testament to him putting me at the fullback <laughs> position yeah. and blocking for him. Yeah. So he gets all the credit for my tenacity and, and yeah. my blocking tenacity in the league. Yeah, I, I don't you think I should get some credit for that? <laughs> you, got, you got that right, TD. <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, I, I created one of the what, probably the greatest <laughs> blocking receiver in the history of the game. So <laughs> I should get some credit. Hey, we you know hey, 165 hey, pounds. That's quite a strategy. Hey, but TD, when you say it like that, it's almost like I'm the girl with great personality. Like, <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Pa you know, pies, pies. I, I do have, no. like, you know what I'm saying? No, 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 no. But hold up. That, you, we already know the passing part. That's a given. The receiving part is a <laughs> yeah. given. 
Yeah. So no, I'm saying like, but the but the blocking part, uh, dude. I, I mean that that's that's where the the rec- that's where the receiver goes. That, that respect level I have for receivers who block like that, man. Come on, man. Like that yeah. that you, anybody can catch the ball, right? But when you right. over there putting your body and blocking them for the run game, man, that's where my right. level of respect is 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 up there. So yeah. I respect <laughs> you for that, brother. Hey, TV, uh, all good. <laughs> hey, TV, yes, we, we, we used to tell Hines in training camp. We should sign peace treaties behind us, like, hey, bro, don't start that today. <laughs> like, bro, just go on. Uh, hey, if you, if you got a crack, on, like, go, go on, give me a warning or something. But you, you 100%, <laughs> you 100% right, TD. Uh, uh, blocking is a want to. And, and Hines went yep. beyond, beyond of wanting to block for somebody. He tried to take your soul out of another grown man. That's exactly what Hines did. So. <laughs> I was just glad, man, Hines was on my side or on my team because what I used to see him do, and I ain't going to say no Hall of Famer names, mm-hmm. what I used to see <laughs> Hines do to a lot of Hall of Famers, that was very impressive. <laughs> I appreciate that, Ike, man. I appreciate it, man. <laughs> I know our time is limited. I've got one more question for Hines. How often do you and Ike text about Super Bowl Forty? Because Ike intercepts the Seahawks, they're driving down in the fourth quarter. Four plays later, you catch the reverse pass from Antoine Randall. Do you guys text like hourly about this, daily about this? How <laughs> frequently do you talk back and forth about that? No. Well, I can tell you one thing. I mean, the thing that we had, man, we complimented each other very well. Uh, I think we probably weren't the most talented team uh, in Super Bowl 40, the team that I've been on, but we're the most close knitted team ever. Yeah. I mean, the things that offense, defense, special teams, we hung out off the field. We played cards, man. We watched, we got treatment together. Uh, we watched games. So for Ike to come up with a huge interception, that, that changed the momentum because they were, they were driving. Seattle was driving down there for Ike to get their interception. I grabbed my helmet, jumped off. Gave him a tap on that butt and went out there. And then a couple of plays later, Antoine Randoel throws a touchdown pass. So for me, it's not just about me winning uh, the Super Bowl or becoming Super Bowl MVP. To me, it was just that was a group effort. You know, I always say time and time again, um, me winning Super Bowl MVP wasn't about me. It was really about the team. And and I getting that huge interception was big for us. It changed the momentum. And uh, we just went down there to seal the game for an Antoine Randall pass to myself down in the end zone. I know our time here is short. Uh, Hines and TD, how can fans get in on this action to get this $88,000? Yeah, listen, man, we're excited to be partnering with Tums this year, who knows all about the heat of competition. And as players, we also – Enjoy the heat of competition, and we look forward to that big uh, game on Sunday. But Tums is hosting the first ever Tums Worthy Big Game Trivia, and it's putting fans' knowledge to the test for the opportunity to, to win a piece of $88,000 in prizes on Sunday. And fans can check us out at Tums Official on Twitter for more details. But tonight at 8 p.m. Eastern time, man, Terrell and I will go head to head in our own trivia challenge, which you can watch live stream via at Tom's official. So be sure to check it out. You got two bulldogs going head to head for one bone. I, you know that two dogs, one bone, dogs, one bone. only one. Can come out of it. So two dogs, one bone. That's how we work, man. And guess what? Put your money on me. I get in that bone. No, no. Listen, I'm gonna smack. I'm gonna smack him around. But you know, two dogs, you know, dog on dog crime. But you know, I'm, I, we'll be buddies afterwards. That's okay. You know what I'm saying? You know how it is. Yeah. Hey, CD Highs, man. I appreciate y'all boys coming on the show, giving us some time, man. I know y'all got a busy schedule going on with the Super Bowl weekends, but make sure y'all do. Make sure everybody who's listening, make sure y'all tuning in, and try to get this 88k from Tom's from Highs Ward and Terrell Davis. Appreciate y'all boys coming on the show, man. I don't want to hold y'all any further. Ike, fun conversation with your former teammate, Heinz Ward and Terrell Davis, the Hall of Famer in rare air, Ike, because three people here on the Believe in Steelers podcast today that have won two Super Bowls apiece. So obviously you and Heinz won two apiece, uh, two in Pittsburgh, and then Terrell Davis, a two-time Super Bowl champion, former Super Bowl MVPs as well, both Heinz and Terrell Davis, uh, Terrell Davis is what's called in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. I think one right. day Heinz Ward's going to get there right. as well. So rare air here on this episode of the Believe It's Do This podcast. I really cool to get their perspective. 
No, one hundred percent. Just to see uh two Georgia Bulldogs going at it, and little yeah. little do people know, Hines Ward was uh <laughs> sitting in front of uh Terrell Davis when it came down to the backfield, a soaking one hundred and sixty five pounds. <laughs> that was that was kind of crazy. But um, TD, we all we all knew what TD Terrell Davis did when he played for the for the uh, Denver Broncos, Super Bowl MVP. When I say man, he was a low, he was a low. I got an opportunity to work with him at the network for a short for a short stint. Same with Hines Ward, man. Hines Ward, I'm so glad he was my teammate, man. Just a tough son of a gun, and he was always smiling. So that's that's what we used to say to Hines. He's, he he liked to nickname himself Wody, like. Boy, what the hell you be thinking when you be hitting these people? He was like, man, I don't be thinking, man. I'm just trying to get a running lane open for one of my running backs. So, man, it's just forcing to see two uh, former MVPs, one in the Hall of Fame. I think Hines will get in the Hall of Fame. But, man, I enjoyed them boys on the show. I know their time was cut short because they're real busy right now. But I appreciate, likewise, as you do, I know as well for them, giving us some time and coming on the show. Absolutely, man. It just means we'll have to try to get them again here on the Believe in Steelers podcast, Ike. We'll take a quick break here to tell our listeners and viewers about NordVPN. And you need the peace of mind when you're on your devices, Ike, using your phone, your computer. Internet security is of the utmost importance. NordVPN is the world's best VPN service, offering the fastest connectivity, most servers, and next-gen encryption to make sure that everything you do online stays secure. Yeah, this Believe in Steelers podcast, man, there is no slacking because y'all ain't hacking nothing over here what we got because we got no VPN security, man. They keep us tight and right. So the viewers can see this on their screen right now. Here's what you need to do. Grab your exclusive NordVPN deal by going to nordvpn.com slash believe or use the code believe. That's B-L-E-A-V to get up to 70% off on your NordVPN plan plus one additional month for free. It's also risk-free with Nord's 30-day money-back guarantee. Ike, we'll go to our next topic. The Steelers are going to interview Lewis Riddick for the vacant GM position. I shouldn't say vacant, but with Kevin Colbert outgoing, leaving the Steelers after April's draft. And I know both you and I are of the thought that the two internal candidates, Omar Khan and Brandon Hunt, have the fast track to be the Steelers' next GM. I still believe that to be the case. But Lewis Riddick as GM, I think it's very, very intriguing. Of any of the external candidates that were considered, I'm talking about Ryan Cowden, Ed Dodds, and JoJo Wooden. I saw Lewis Riddick, and it was like, man, we're gonna we potentially, potentially could have a very, very different era of Steelers football if, in right. fact, the Steelers decide to go and make this hire outside of their organization. Yeah, I mean, don't forget, Lewis was once a pit Panther. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? So he he knows everything about the city of Pittsburgh. Um, and when he played, I think he went to the Raiders as well. So he know he knows something about tough, tough football, especially back in the day. But if you just look at him on TV, man, he's very well buttoned up. And when I when you want to talk about the analysis side and just knowing and understanding football and players as well, he know personnel and players as well. So he's been doing it for a long time. He got a lot of experience. I'm sure he didn't put a lot of work in. Don't forget he was a pro scout in the league as well too so he got some kind of experience but i just know uh lewis riddick definitely from tv on how button up one of his analysis and how he sound on tv so it's going to be kind of interesting but they're bringing some guys in so if i'm omar and if i'm b hunt i'm not gonna know kev and mr ronaldo like hold on man we already got this work in-house what the heck y'all doing but you know of course as an organization you got to go through the proper process and procedure and make sure you uh cross out T's and dot all eyes. So time to tell, man, me personal, my personal opinion, I do hope Omar Khan gets the job because I really do believe and understand he feels what it is to be a Pittsburgh Steeler. Um, B Hunt, of course, I'm sure down the line, he will get a job as well. That's just me personally speaking. But bringing in Lewis Riddick, I understand why. Um, a guy who understands the area, know the city, went to Pitt. Um, and, and again, man, him just being so buttoned up on TV, man, you got to give the man some kind of shot. I mentioned his name when we were first talking about it. And it's like, OK, who could emerge? We had the two in internal candidates pegged immediately. Mm -hmm. You can go back and look. And I 
again, the connection to Pittsburgh as well. Correct. Now, as an executive, he has experience with both Washington and Philadelphia as uh, pro scouts helping with player personnel with both of those mm-hmm. organizations. And when he was the Eagles director of player personnel from 2010 through 2013, he had 41 mm-hmm. picks, 13 in the first round, in the first three rounds. He drafted five Pro Bowl players during that stretch. So, He has some experience doing just that. Again, former player, he played for the Falcons, the Browns, and the Raiders during his playing career. And I'll say this, as much as I would love to see him join an organization like the Steelers, I really enjoy his commentary as a Monday night football announcer. So immediately, if he does decide to take a front office role, which I think he would do a great job at, my thought process is, is who's filling in for him in the Monday night football booth because I really, really enjoy his analysis. Yeah, I'm going to keep him on TV. If I'm ESPN, man, I'm going to go on up his salary right mm-hmm. quick, make sure I know I'm not going to let him go. Now, if it's just – if that, that's his dream job and he really does want to be a GM and he's in that position, Lewis going on to take it. But if I'm ESPN, man, I'm going to go on and get selfish and I'm going to pay this man a little bit more because I think he can do this for the next 25, 30 years – because his because his smart and, and so how detailed he is online on not online on TV and on air. So I'm gonna rock with Lewis. Um, I know he can handle his business as a GM. I just like him better as an analysis on TV because uh, he educates not only uh, myself but I'm sure he educates a lot of other people. And I like his insight as well. Like if I had to predict how this would play out, I would predict that Omar Khan would get the job. I think. Uh, Brandon Hunt would be number two. And then I think Riddick would maybe be the third choice. He was the first one again. And this is no knock on Ryan Cowden, Ed Dodds, or JoJo Wooden. But just knowing how the Steelers operate, how they typically promote within, I, that's why I think Omar Khan and Brandon Hunt have the, fr- the fast track for that GM position. But like we said at this, at the, you know, when the Steelers got eliminated from the playoffs, it's like you're going to have a new quarterback, a new defensive coordinator, a new GM. So it is truly a new era of Steelers football in 2022. Yeah, you got to have that good marriage too. Coach T got to like this. He got to like whoever because that's how he was with Kevin Cobra. Him and Kevin Cobra had a, still do to this day, got a great head coach and GM relationship. That's why Pittsburgh sends and draft guys to the Pro Bowl, then you got Hall of Famers, then you got another Pro Bowl, you got up-and-coming Hall of Famers, then you got another Pro Bowl guy, then you got another up-and-coming Hall of Fame because they're both on the same page when it comes down to understanding what it is to be a Pittsburgh still and what they need to look for as a team. So whoever comes in um, to replace Kevin Colbert, they, him and Ke- him and Coach Tom, they got to be on the same page. That's just how it's going to be. And, and, you know, Kevin Coburn and Coach T have been doing this for years. That's what makes the marriage so good. So when you see consistency of a lot of good teams, and the, when you look at the Kansas City Chiefs right now, and at one point in time we was looking at the, the, the uh, New England Patriots and those guys and John Harbaugh and over there with the Baltimore Ravens, like – when you have a good relationship between your GM with the head coach, man, that makes everything so, so easy. Both of y'all on the same page. Both of y'all understand. Now, will y'all have any kind of disagreement? I'm sure in a few draft picks y'all will, but y'all can put that put that aside and understand what's best for the organization and the team. And by the end of the day, man, if you're a good coach, you just say, find me a player. I'll coach them up and get them ready. Yeah, Ike, one other thought I had is if the Steelers did decide to make an outside hire, Mm-hmm. conceivably both hunt and Khan could stay in their respective roles they might not like it and it might be you know i know a new gm is going to want to bring in his some of his personnel and some people that he has relationships with right but because i know Khan and hunt both interviewed for other positions this off season they still have jobs and roles with the pittsburgh steelers so I'm interested to see how all of this plays out. And the Rooney family has quite a decision on its hands because (laughs) Kevin Colbert's just going to be yet another Steelers Hall of Famer when it's all said and done and once he becomes eligible, Ike. So uh, this is what's going to happen. I mean, Ben's headed to the Hall of Fame now. Uh, I think Kevin Colbert's on his way as well. So kind of like you said, you're talking about the marriage with the head coach. 
whoever fills this role is going to have his work cut out for him because taking over for someone who's had a tremendous level of success in Kevin Colbert. Yeah, I don't, I don't know how many Pro Bowl guys Kevin Colbert drafted from the Pittsburgh Steelers. I'm we would gonna, need a different metric, Ike. There's too many. There are too many. Yeah, from the Pittsburgh Steelers. I'm going to say – I'm going to say like 65, 70. I'm just going to guess. And next and on the next show, you'll get that to me, the exact numbers. I'm going to say 65. <laughs> and I ain't even talking about the Hall of Famers or potential Hall of Famers under Kevin Colbert when he was a GM or still is now the GM for the Pittsburgh Steelers. So, man, he just he just got the knack. You know, he's Ozzy with the Baltimore Ravens. You know, them two guys, Ozzy, um, Hall of Fame, GM, and Kevin Colbert, in my mind, Hall of Fame, GM. Coach Harbaugh probably be a Hall of Fame coach, and in my mind, Coach T will be a Hall of Fame coach. That's just how it is when you got some consistency, you know, at, at that level because they've been doing it at a high level for so long. So that's what I look at, man. But time will tell, man. I hope uh, one of the boys get it, especially Omar Khan, uh, gets this GM job. If they don't get it, uh, I think they will let him sit, and I think the organization will say whoever they hire, and hey, these two guys between Omar and B. Hunt, they're going to have to sit here because they understand and know the Pittsburgh way. Y'all can catch a few tips from these two guys. So that's just what it is, man. But we'll see. But I wouldn't mind seeing Lewis, but I'd rather see Lewis Reddick on TV than to be a GM, selfishly speaking. Yes, yes. I. <laughs> you're talking my turkey, Ike. And you don't have to wait till the next episode of the Believe It Steelers podcast. The research department got us this right away. In 22 Kevin Colbert-led drafts, the Steelers have selected 21 Pro Bowlers, so that obviously does not include free agency or any trades. But 22 Kevin Colbert-led drafts, the 2022 season will be his 23rd. But so far, 21 Pro Bowlers selected from the Pittsburgh, for the Pittsburgh Steelers. So you're essentially dra- every year you're drafting a Pro Bowl player. Again, pretty good track record of success, Ike. Yeah, that's, that's impressive, bro. That's very impressive. We will take a quick break to tell our listeners and viewers about BetterHelp. And Ike, you need help achieving and accomplishing your dreams and goals. There are things that can interfere with your happiness. So betterhelp.com slash Steelers. What that does is it will match you with your own licensed professional therapist to help you out with just those things. Man, regardless on how educated or how smart you are, man, we all do at some point in time need some kind of help. So make sure y'all go to betterhelp.com, man, and get with a therapist, not only who can help some of your goals, but exceed your expectations. Yes, yes. So for the listeners, you'll get 10% off your first month by visiting our sponsor, betterhelp.com slash Steelers. You can see that on your screen right now. Join more than 1 million people who have taken charge of their mental health. Again, that's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Steelers. Ike, by the time this episode comes out, we will already know who's won all the NFL awards. But because we're recording this on Thursday, I got to make the campaign and say congratulations to T.J. Watt. Because if he does not win NFL Defensive Player of the Year, I don't know who who will. And here's the case for Watt, right? Tying Michael Strahan's single season sack record. But it's not just that he had the 22 and a half sacks. It's that he missed two full games. And in three games in which he played, he played fewer than 50% of the Steelers defensive snaps. It's not just the sacks either. 21 tackles for a loss in the 2021 season, along with 39 quarterback hits. He's not your defensive MV, your defensive player of the year. I, I don't know who is. You might as well retire the award. I'm going to go ahead and manifest this, man. A big shout out to TJ Watt for winning yes. defensive player of the year for the That's Pittsburgh. Cool. I ain't even play a full season. I missed two games. I only played in a couple of games. I only played 50%, and I wound up getting the sack, a tiny of sack record from Michael Strahan. So just imagine if I really played 17 games instead of 15 games. Probably, I probably would have hit the 28 or the 30 piece. But going on, TJ Watt, man, going on, celebrate this league defensive MVP because you definitely deserve it. And it only took you 15 games to do it. Again, like if, and here's one other point too, like where would the Steelers have been this year? They were 9 7 and 1, just snuck into the playoffs as the seventh seed. Where would the Steelers have been this year 
if not for TJ Watt? They, they would have been at home with us sitting down and somebody on our podcast every week. That's what happened. <laughs> That's exactly what it would have been. A lot of people would have been a lot of people would have been cut and fired and we would have get we would we would have been getting a lot of people on our show, Mark. So they better be glad TJ Watt <laughs> is on that organization. Uh, again, and I don't, I don't think that's too ridiculous either, Ike, to say that I, uh, Watt could have gotten a, a 30 piece, 30 sacks in a season or something yeah. close to that had he been right. completely healthy he would have, throughout he the duration. Would have his record, my, my personal opinion. Easily. Two, yeah. Easily. Like, like, to me, there's no doubt in my mind about that. It's just how high would that have been? Can he replicate that in future seasons? But now teams are going to be keying on him, which is to be expected. So hopefully Alex Highsmith can develop on the opposite side. Cam Hayward can keep doing his thing. Maybe Tyson Alualu and Stephon Tuitt come back. Maybe you draft a dog in the 2022 NFL draft. We get TJ Watt some help to where if you want to key on him, someone else is going to have a one-on-one matchup somewhere along the defensive line. So that's kind of where my thought process goes with all of this, Ike. No, I agree with you 100%. I think they're they going to get an outside linebacker for sure. But Highsmith, man, let's please don't sleep on Highsmith. He, he's turning the corner himself. Yep. He's become the professional the Pittsburgh Steelers was, was looking at. He's starting to become the A. Ingram. You can go to KC because we got a young stud behind you that we really like when it comes down to the running and rushing the passer game. So, Time will tell, but I think they're going to get an outside linebacker and a nose tackle or a D tackle, so say, to help get some of the pressure from T.J. Watt. But you know just going into the game who you got to look for. You got to look for Cam and you got to look for number 90. That's T.J. Watt, and you still can't stop either one of the two. That's why I think them two work well together. That's why you put them on the same side together because it creates a lot of mismatches for either one of them. I cannot wait to start dominating the line of scrimmage again, Ike, and just making right. opposing offenses' lives a living hell. I will say oh. it. I can't wait for that again. Like that, it, I'm fired up. It's early this morning, but I'm fired up about that possibility of just playing smash mouth Pittsburgh Steelers defensive football. Correct. 100% I agree, Mark. Okay, Ike, we will also find out later tonight who the five Hall of Famers will be for the 2022 Pro Football Hall of Fame class. There are 15 members and a guy you know all too well who lives with the, near you in Orlando. Mm-hmm. I'm going to make the case for Devin Hester. He's got to go in on the first ballot, Ike. And he, growing up for me, one of my favorite players, maybe my favorite Chicago Bear ever. And a lot of people point to his kickoff return touchdown in the Super Bowl against the Colts only player to return the opening kickoff back for a touchdown. But my case for him is pretty simple, is if you close your eyes and you think about who's the greatest return man in NFL history, there's one answer, and the answer is Devin Hester. So I had the opportunity to see him growing up as a kid. It's one of the greatest weekends of my life. So this was the year after the Super Bowl. This was in 2007. I went to a game at Soldier Field with my mom, and like I it was really, really cold. Our backs to Lake Michigan, the snow's coming down. We're bundled up in blankets. I remember my mom got me a hot chocolate more so for warmth than anything because it was really, really cold. The Bears were down in that game late in the game, down 14. And to that point in the game, Hester had already run two returns back for touchdowns. And so there was like seven minutes and some change left in the fourth quarter. And my mom turns to me and asks the question no teenager wants to hear and says, hey, do you want to leave early to beat the traffic? And I said, no, let's see if Hester can do it one more time. Except this time, it wasn't Devin Hester. It was your college teammate, Charles you know. Tillman, blocks the punt against the Denver Broncos, and it leads to a Bears comeback victory. They win it in overtime. And the Bears didn't make the playoffs that year after the Super Bowl. It was a disappointing right. season. But for one more weekend and one more Sunday, you held out hope that they could get back to the postseason. That Saturday before, my brother won the state championship uh, down at the University of Illinois in Champaign, Illinois. So it was like the greatest football weekend. Devin Hester was part of that. He'd come on the field, and they'd start playing Crank That Soldier Boy. And just him on the field, the electricity at Soldier Field, Ike, I've never experienced anything like it, and I've seen some great athletes in my day. So that would be my case for Devin Hester in the Hall of Fame. Like, 
seeing that firsthand, I've never experienced anything like that in all of sports. Devin Hester put him in on the first ballot tonight for the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Yeah, so you're looking for qualifications when you want to talk about a Pro Football Hall of Fame. You 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 look at did this person dominate consistently over course over a course of a five or plus plus more year span. You look at was this player dynamic. You look at was he a game changer. You look at man when you played this player, man, did you game plan for this player? That's Devin Hester. When you looked at Devin Hester, whether he was playing cornerback at one one point in time, receiver, whether he was a return man, he dominated. Then when you just want to specialize and said, okay. We're going to put him a little bit as a gadget guy, but he's definitely going to be a return man. That's a whole nother story because he just needed the ball one time. And that's hard to to change the game as a special teamsman and understand, man, just give me the ball one time and I guarantee I'm going to go and I'm going to score this touchdown, touchdown and I'm going to get in the paint. That's special. And the reason why Devin has, to me, in my mind, he's so special because he did it at every football team he went to, whether it's Chicago, Atlanta, or, or anywhere else. Devin was going to get the ball in his hands and he was going to score. And when you look at special teams, you only got one shot, one kill to make your name and put your name in the paper, as I would tell my kids. And Devin, every time he got the ball, he put his name in the paper. So then you go to the biggest stage, which is the Super Bowl, and what you're doing to open the kickoff. You take that thing and you put your name in the paper. You get in the paint and you score. But that's just been Devin Hester. Regardless on what team Devin Hester has been playing for, that's exactly what he did. Give me the ball one time. I'm going to scope. If you look at receivers and running backs, man, they can have 20-something carries. Receivers can have, you know, 15 targets, probably catch the ball yeah, 10 times, and they might get in the paint maybe once, twice the best. Devin has to say, kick the ball to me one time and watch what happened. <laughs> that's that's special. That's how I break it down. That's how I look at it. So in my mind, yes, uh, one of my neighbors, one of, a, one, of a, one of my good friends, one of my NFL brother alumni, Devin has to, in my mind, yes, he should hit that thing in first battle. And Ike, there's stiff competition because I look at the list of the other 14 finalists and it's like, man, we can only pick five. This is really difficult. But again, it's as simple as if you think of the greatest return man and Hester is in the top 100 uh, NFL players of all time as a, as a return specialist, but there's no other, there's never been a return man make it into the Pro Football Hall of Fame solely as a return man. There's been punters, there have been kickers, but not as a return man. So to me, like, I look at... I go to Chicago well with uh, return guys. Gail Sarris, he was a return man as well as a a running back himself. So y'all, Chicago, when it comes down to the returns, I don't know what it is up there in that cold weather, but they don't mind taking that thing to the house, so say. Well, I also look at, like you always say, what do the players say? What do the players say? And Vikings punter Chris uh, Cluey said that, like, he would kick to Hester and it would just kill his net average where it's like he'd have the right amount of hang time, the right amount of depth. And it's like, oh, all our players, you know, they've got their lanes filled and they have their responsibilities. And you think that you have Hester contained and, again, just a prolific return man. And so – I that's the number one. And again, it's some of my Chicago homerism shining through there. But this is a great list, regardless of who gets in. Jared Allen, right. Willie Anderson, Rondé Barber, Tony Buscelli, Leroy Butler, Torrey Holt, Andre Johnson, God, Torrey Holt and Andre Johnson alone. Uh, Sam Mills, Richard Seymour, Zach Thomas, Demarcus Ware, Reggie Wayne, Patrick Willis, Bryant Young. Right. Like to me, oh. I'm like, these are a who's who. Yeah. <laughs> That's that's I mean, it's it's gonna be tough, man. Richard Seymour. Richard Seymour was one of my favorite defensive linemen yeah. ever. 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 So we'll see how the uh the votees with how they feel about Richard Seymour, but Sam Mills, oh my gosh. Leroy Butler oh, smacking people in the face. Like, oh Lord. All right, man. Let's 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 get back. Come on, man. I'm 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 relapsing. I'm daydreaming on all these Hall of Fame guys. You, you potential Hall of Fame guys. You was naming. I'm sorry. All right, all right, Ike. We can move on. Super Bowl Fifty Six preview. Mm-hmm. Rams and Bengals. I know you're going with the Bengals. This no. combined the two teams' record worst combined winning percentage in a Super Bowl matchup ever. Super Bowl Fifty Six, SoFi Stadium, L.A. And like I look back, right. The start of the season when the Bengals had the fifth overall pick in the 2021 draft, 
Panay Sewell, who I think is going to be a very good, a fine line for, for the Detroit All Lions. The yes, yeah. But the debate was, oh, should the Bengals have picked Sewell over Jamar Chase? And here we are. Like, I think Sewell is going to be a dog for the Lions, right? But right. Chase has just been terrific. Potential uh, Hall 80, of Fame. 81 catches, more than 1,400 yards through the air, caught 13 touchdowns, most by a rookie since a guy by the name of Randy Moss. But Ike is a DB. I had to flip it and go on the other side of the ball. Just for you, Ike Taylor. I love the Bengals offense and all of the weapons that they have. We're not talking enough about this Bengals defense, Ike. Trey Hendrickson, guy by the name of Mike Hilton. Two of the better offseason acquisitions, and we're still not talking about it. And I know Burrow and the offense gets a lot of the praise, but I go back to you, you talked earlier when we were with TD and Hines about Burrow taking nine sacks in the win of the upset on the road of the number one seeded Tennessee Titans. To me, that game came down to a fourth and one. Titans are driving down and the Bengals stuff Derrick Henry on a key fourth and one conversion okay. and turn the ball back over. We're not talking enough about the Bengals defense. Like, we're not. We and and that's what people sleeping on. See, see, right now everybody getting caught up in this star power hype. You know the Von Millers, the Aaron Donald, the the Malcolm Floyds, the Jalen Ramsey, the could be comeback man. I was on a, no, I wasn't on the couch a couple of days ago, but the Eric Weddle who came back from from being at home. Then you got Matthew Stafford. I do love his story, and 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 Cam Akers. I do love his story coming off. You know, his injury. And then after that, you got OBJ that get traded over there. Robert Woods, he gets hurt. And then you got nobody can't check Cooper Cup, man. <laughs> and really, nobody can't check Cooper Cup, man. <laughs> but when you look at just the – then you got, you know, who's who's leading the charge is Coach Sean McVay. He couldn't go to a perfect city. And for his personality and everything, what he got going on, he is Mr. L.A. You got to give the man his credit. But man, they got some country folks in Cincinnati, man, and, and they and they and and the head guy is Jackpot Joey, you know. And all he want to do is play football, play play football, beat teams up. Don't mind getting hit by that bull that's coming straight down to him and smoke a cigar. My favorite. Then you give them some kids, man. You give them a Ferrari. You give them a uh, you give them a Porsche. Then you give them a pickup truck, man. So then you give them T Higgins, Jamar Chase, and Tyler Boyd. Oh, there you go. Then you get them a then you give them a big monster truck sitting in the backfield too. Really big monster truck sitting in the backfield, in uh, in Perron from from Oklahoma. And but Joe Mixon been doing this thing. But then you look on the defensive side. You look at Eli Apple, man. And you might not like Eli Apple. You might say, man, he think he better than what it is. But that's exactly what you want as a cornerback. You want a guy with a lot of confidence who don't give a f on what you think about him. All they want to do is play football. Then you go to the linebacker position. Then you go to the D-line position. Like, this team plays just like a team. So when I say I'm reminiscing on the 05 Pittsburgh Steelers, because they're one of the most talented team. They they play better as a team than any other team. That's exactly what we did. We 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 stood our roles. We leaned on our playmakers. The same thing Hines Ward was saying earlier on our show. And that's what made us so special. We just really cared about each other. We didn't care about the star power. We didn't care who we knew on and off, <laughs> on and off the field. We just wanted to play for each other. We wanted to win for each other. So um, when it comes down to that, I think they have a lot of individualism sitting over there with the L.A. Rams, and that's just what it is because that's mm-hmm. the star power city. <laughs> but Cincinnati and that defense, man, and what they got going on, them boys just play, you know, that you, you look at I look at I look at the LA Rams is the city of Vegas. I look at the Cincinnati Bengals on a country farm. They, and they, that's exactly that's exactly how I look at it. So I'm gonna go with the country farm guys, but we're not talking about you one hundred percent right, Mark. We are not talking about the defense enough. But the LA Rams will see Sunday, six thirty. Trey Hendrickson, 14 sacks off the edge in Ike. You mentioned Eli Apple. How about Cheeto Bay Awuzie? The other cornerback allowed fewer yards per target than a man by the name of Jalen Ramsey. He was it, wasn't it? Wasn't Wasn't it? Then he got drafted by that. Was it a first round draft pick or second round draft pick? 
I'm going to get IT on this. Of yeah, Chido we'll Bay. Oh, but he's had a terrific season for the Bengals, and no one's talking about him. From 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 Kyle, hey hey man, listen, listen. They they got some. They got st- They got star power over there. We're just not talking about them. But we will see Sunday how explosive, how good this defense is, how many stars, unheard stars, unsung stars they have over there on that defense for the Cincinnati Bengals. Awuzie, a second-round pick in the 2017 draft, started his career with the Dallas Cowboys. Yep. Like, so He went to Colorado. Then- Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's spot on, spot on. And I'm curious to see how the Bengals deploy Mike Hilton, if he's going to be up against Cup in the slot, how exactly he's going to be utilized, because we know all about Mike Hilton. I don't fault him for signing that four-year deal with the Bengals, but a guy who just consistently makes plays for this defense, something we're very familiar with in Pittsburgh. Mark, I'm gonna go I'm gonna go on go to betonline.ag and I, and I'm gonna bet that uh, little Mike Hilton gonna get MVP of this game. Whoa, <laughs> that's that, that's 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 a, that's a, that's a stretch. But if I bet oh, if, I, if I hit him, I got action because if anybody can shut down Cooper Cup, it's little Mike Hilton. Like if this comes to fruition, like psychic might not even describe and it's really hard for a quarterback not to win the super bowl mvp Ike, but if mike Hilton right. goes on and wins the super bowl mvp I, I, like literally I mean, i'm just gonna play this, this clip on loop and say check the timestamp. mark this 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 what i'm guessing I'm, I'm i'm guessing two sacks i'm guessing two interceptions i'm guessing five tackle for losses and i'm guessing <laughs> a total of eight tackles we gotta we're gonna we're gonna rewind this when I when I hit this thing, we're gonna rewind this, and we usually be like, "Man, <laughs> I know me playing around here." <laughs> I'm really excited to watch the Jalen Ramsey Jamar Chase matchup as well. If there's one matchup I'm most excited to watch, those two players because it's like Ramsey's got to go up against players like a Tyreek Hill, a speedster, and then another week it goes up against uh, Mike Evans, totally different style of receiver. So it's like. He can run with the fastest. He can he can ball with the bullies at the line of scrimmage too. So how the Rams utilize him and deploy him is going to be the chess match that I'm really excited to watch too, Ike. So I've got I know you've got the Bengals, but can we get a score prediction here, Ike, before we sign off here? Yeah, it's going to be 24 27 Cincinnati. You, you, oh, like you you looked at the <laughs> the exact same score, Ike. The exact same score That's in the run in the rundown. I got the Bengals twenty seven and the Rams twenty four. Right. Great minds think alike. I suppose usually I like going up against you and saying, "Ike, you're full of it," but your picks have been spot on all season long. And we know the listeners and the viewers of the Believe and Steelers podcast know that Ike Taylor is a known psychic. I don't know about that. You you put that crown on my head for that one, so I rock with you. Mm. You've gotten things right too many times before. One other thing, too, Ike, you know we live here in Florida. I found this to be interesting. I'm down mm-hmm. here at Sarasota. Moat Marine Aquarium has the Manatees pick the Super Bowl matchup. And both Hugh and Buffett at Moat Marine Aquarium feel good about the Bengals as well. Buffett is 11-2 and two with his picks. Buffett, the Manatee down at Moat Marine Aquarium, they have some fun with that each year. So... 11 and 2 is a pretty good track record, Ike. And you're pretty spot on. People can accuse us of AFC North favoritism, but we're rocking with the Cincinnati Bengals to beat the Los Angeles Rams in Super Bowl 56. Who they, baby? Who they? I never thought I'd hear those words come out of your mouth, Ike Taylor. Ike, you're the absolute best. I want to give you a shout out. I want to thank the folks over at the Believe Podcast Network. We've got crews down at Radio Row in Los Angeles. So check out all the great podcasts featured on the Believe Podcast Network. I want to thank our producers over at Brinks TV, led by John Brinkus, Courtney Vargas, Herbert Diaz, and the crew over there. Got a lot of sponsors to thank on today's show, too. We've got Bet Online, NordVPN, BetterHelp, and Masterworks. And thank you to the listeners and the viewers of the Believe It Steelers podcast. Thank you for rocking with us all season long. Thank you for tuning in and watching this episode of the Believe in Steelers podcast. Man, got to give a major shout out to my dog, Mark Bergman, but also got to give a huge shout out 
to all the sponsors who have been sponsoring our shows, but man, who grandfather grandfather us in was bet online. I appreciate everything. Once again, want to thank the viewers. Make sure y'all give us a, a five piece um, stars and rate and reviews. We appreciate everybody just tuning in and listening to our show. Want to thank Brinks TV as well, Miss Courtney and her staff. So man, there's a lot of things to be thankful for. So I just want to thank everybody for helping this show be this kind of show because we, all we try to do is entertain and give knowledge when it comes down to football. And make sure y'all give us our five star please because our bosses love that. <laughs> yes, sir. Thank you to today's guests to Heinz Ward and Terrell yes. Davis. For Ike Taylor, I'm Mark Bergen. Thank you for listening and watching the Believe in Steelers podcast. We will be back on Monday to recap Super Bowl 56. Enjoy the big game. Until then, take care. It's so long, everybody. Peace.